Hey guys, I'm going to talk about an important issue. It is inflation. So magic cards have cost more money now and will cost more money in the future than they have in the past. You can see this in the cost of booster packs, which used to be $2.99, then like free 19 and now the MSRP is $4.29 at a big box retail outlet. We also see this in Commander decks. Commander decks have gone up from, I believe the original Commander decks were $29.99, maybe, I forget. But they were recently $34.99. Did the Commander 2018 cost more because it has higher quality print? Hopefully, but we don't know that yet. It could already have been printed. Now, what does this mean for the cards inside? It has actually a lot of financial implication. So if you take a look at the decks, the decks are controlled by one principle. No single card should be more expensive than an entire deck. You might be like, oh, of course, that, of course, how could that be? It happened one time, a true name nemesis, and they had to change the Mind Seas deck or they had to print more Mind Seas decks than the other decks because the other decks were not selling, but the Mind Seas deck, you could never find it. And that was because the true name Nemesis, that one card was the, you could sell on TCG Player for more than an entire, assuming you get a, a MSRP. Now, there's also implications as to what the ultimate design of Wizard of Coast is. Is it to get more players or is it to soak up as much money from the current player base as possible? I think they're getting greedy. And follow me on this one. You might not agree, but I do have some evidence. We used to get a master set once every two years and it was like a big celebration. People were really happy. And it was a way that you don't need to spend that much money. Right, you would only you would save up for it, and then every two years you would buy a case or a box or draft with your friends. Now, think about what just happened. Iconic Masters, Masters Twenty Five, Eternal Masters, Eternal Masters again, unhinged, which actually was one the best selling of the bunch, and yeah. Wow, that is a lot. Challenger decks, right? There is a lot of product out there right now being pushed. The Explorers of Ixlon. I mean, there's probably like 8 million different types of products that we didn't have before. And now we have it. What's the two-headed giant product that we are going to have soon? I mean, my gosh, how big is the two-player? Oh, can't, not, cannot in, forget the anthologies, right? Nicol Bolas, Arc Enemy. We literally have more product over the last 12 months than I've seen when I started the game for multiple years. It's insane the number of products we have, and these products are more expensive. Case in point, anthologies, they are all like over $100 MSRP. They're not meant for people to just buy, right? They're meant for, I'm not sure who they're meant for because they don't sell well. Unhinged, buying cards that you can only really use the land ever. Interesting concept, right? So the land is interesting because, hey, you're really just paying for that land at this point in time for modern standard and legal sets fascinating fascinating when they take things they know players want and they keep pushing it and masterpieces right the ultimate lottery ticket then they stop masterpieces then they re did masterpieces and they called it right because eldritch moon people forget this but eldritch moon did not have a masterpiece in it they didn't have any masterpieces in it. 
kind of strange, right? So you, we are getting pushed more and more product and the product is getting more and more expensive. You know, packs are now $10 a pack. They come in free packs now. So instead of just buying one pack at Walmart, they come in free packs now. You can buy dual decks. You can buy challenger decks. Oh, I guess dual decks are, are gone. But you can buy four different challenger decks, which are kind of like four different event decks. I'm sure that they will make a modern event deck again. And you, you can buy a board game-like deck. You can buy Arc Enemy. You can buy... Yeah, you actually... I'll take it back. You can buy dual decks, anthologies, right? And they will keep coming out and coming out and coming out. This move to make something that's always been reasonably priced at $34.99, $39.99, this extra $5 has a lot of implication of what's in the deck. I could see $30, $35 cards now being in this deck. Not like multiple of them, right? Just one of them. And that brings a lot of cards that normally would not be reprintable due to their price and makes them reprintable. That's the main takeaway. I think they are really going, everything they have done has been to get consumers to spend more money and spend less money on the secondary market. Why buy a card from the secondary market? Why buy a Hazret from TCG Player when we can give you a Hazret for cheaper than that cost? No one would do it, right? You got Hazret, you got Chandra, you got that legendary vehicle, Heart of Kinrin, Kyren. Why do that when you can buy from us? Does that make sense? They're trying to sell singles. I think that's the end goal is to eventually make a system which they can sell singles. So when you talk about these color boosters, which I mentioned, and it is real, I know a lot of you think it's fake, but it's real, where you buy a booster pack for $6.99. Notice it is more expensive. You get 35 cards, one rare or mythic. I think they all, you can also get two, two rares and or mythics. Why have different color packs? The white one is very good, by the way. It's got Lyra and History of Benelia. I mean, those two are OP, very expensive cards. Why do that? It's one more step to selling singles, right? Hey, do you want a chance of getting Lyra or do you want to take the, a random shot? And why put it only in Walmart? Well, why don't we just get rid of the local game store totally? Why be dependent? So they obviously have been talking about talking to GameStop and probably Geek Life and places like this. Why be dependent on different stores with different standards of cleaning? So when you go to one store, it can be really nice. And you go to another store, it can be trash. There is no, as a franchise model, which it has to become eventually, because everything becomes franchise. Everything becomes a McDonald's. So you know that local... I'll tell you the story of Ben and Jerry's. I learned this during corporations. And it's a very good story to tell. Ben and Jerry's were two hippies. They were really nice, go-getting people. And they promised... They said on the record that they would never sell their ice cream Ben and Jerry's. They would never give to corporations. They would never do that. They wanted to just be a fun group of people. Or then they got their first offer. They completely changed. They sold. Wizard of the Coast would much rather have a set, you know, oh, background checks. Okay, GameStop, did you do a background check on your employee? Oh, you did. Good. We're not liable for being sued to oblivion later. Oh, GameStop, did you hire that judge? Oh, good. We're not liable for being sued later. And that is what I think it's going to be is they need to work with an organization like GameStop or someone else that can define standards. If there are no standards, there's a lot of liability. And for whatever reason, Wizard of Coast, they should realize they can't just, it's like the truck that you see on the highway that is like a cement truck or it's like a, a truck that holds 
stones in it, right? Like it's literally a truck that like stones are fall falling and hitting people's windows. And then it has a little sign saying, this truck is not responsible for all the stones falling out and hitting your window. No, it is. It legally is responsible. Just because you say that you're not responsible and you make this really cool gesture and post and you're telling local game stores they should all get bank background checks on judges and employees. Just because you say you're not responsible does not mean that you're not actually responsible if someone tested the case in court. I think that's the danger. They need, you know, you asked about Subway and Walmart and all these systems. They're the same. Walmart is pretty much the same anywhere, any town, any city. Any, I went to Walmart in China recently and it, it's like a better version of an American Walmart, but it sells the same goods. It was no different. I went, if you go to a McDonald's in China, it is very similar in design, but like instead you get a rice patty and stuff. Yes, the food is slightly different, but it, there's a system and they know that this system works because it's been tried time and time again. Which of the Coast does not have such a system. And I think that's why they're pushing local game stores out. Now, there is one local game store that can make a fist full of money, and that's Rudy's model, which I may or may not already made that video. It's a very fascinating model, and I think that's the future of game stores. Anyway, bye, guys.